The trouble with old steam locomotives, this is part five, repairing the water gauge. The main problem with the water gauge on this engine is that the drain tap leaks very badly. But the good thing about this water gauge is it is exactly the right height which corresponds to the top of the firebox crown inside the boiler. Before removing the water gauge, I'm verifying the height of the firebox crown by sticking my fingers in the firehole door. There are, of course, more scientific methods of doing this, but I need to know where the firebox crown finishes. I made a mark on the boiler which corresponds to the underside of the firebox crown inside the boiler, and you will notice that the bottom nut of the water gauge is slightly above this, to allow for the thickness of the metal that the firebox is made from. When in steam, it is absolutely vital that the water level never drops below the height of the firebox crown, or the boiler could be severely damaged. The other problem with this water gauge is the top nut has been forced in to the wrong thread. So even though the bottom of the water gauge does correspond to the height of the firebox crown, it's in a bit of a state. I think the time has probably come to change this. The first thing to do is to unscrew the gland nuts that hold the piece of glass in place. After removing the incorrectly threaded top cap, of course. In this part of the clip, I'm rotating the glass and pushing it out of the top. And oh, look at this. The top of the gauge glass is quite badly broken. So I remove the broken bit, and now this is what's left. A piece of glass tube. That was removed without any difficulty. And I'm also going to remove this pipe. This is the injector steam pipe. I'm moving it out of the way, just so I can work unhindered. A nice touch about this water gauge is the fact that it has lock nuts, which really helps when you come to align the two parts of the water gauge, the top fitting and the bottom fitting. I never use PTFE tape at all on water gauge or any other kind of fittings, because I think it looks messy, and I much prefer Loctite 542. In this clip I'm having a quick probe with my screwdriver. The bottom water gauge bush doesn't look too furred up at all, considering the age and condition of the engine. In this clip, I'm temporarily refitting the gland nut so I don't lose it. This is where I ran into a couple of problems. The first problem was a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch water gauge is not the correct thread. The correct thread is 3 8 by 40 threads per inch, which is a little bit on the unusual side. I'm verifying this by using a 3 8 by 40 threads per inch tap. And also by doing this, it cleans out any debris and damage to the thread. Here's the bottom fitting with the leaky tap, and I think I have a plan that will be successful. But first I want to show you something. I'm comparing the old water gauge bottom fitting with a brand new one as made by Chris English at CME Engineering. And apart from being the wrong thread, I can see a major problem with this plan of fitting one of these. Previously I mentioned that I'd made a mark on the boiler, which is the underside of the firebox crown. And even when I use a larger water gauge with a 3 8 by 32 threads fitting, the bottom nut is still going to be far too low for the height of the firebox crown inside the boiler. Just to hold it in place, I've very lightly screwed the 3 8 by 32 threads per inch fitting into the boiler bush, just a couple of threads in. This is basically okay, there'd be no problem using this. But the main reason I want to retain the original fitting is that it's made from phosphor bronze, not brass. What I'm doing here is making a mark on the end of the fitting and I'm going to cut this off. You'll see why shortly. In my box of very small globe valves, I found this one. It's a quarter by 40, 90 degree globe valve and it's perfect for the job. Even if this one starts to leak, it's a very simple job in the future to just change the globe valve. Once I started the lathe, it started making this silly noise again. I really must sort out this three phase converter or maybe change it for an inverter. Anyway, for now, on with the job. I face across the front first. I want to actually shorten the part where I'm going to fit the globe valve. And after that, I started to turn it longitudinally to clean up the actual part that's going to hold the globe valve. I don't want the fitting to be too big and clumsy. Just to make sure I don't chew up the body of the globe valve, I've angled the tool slightly. So now I can remove sufficient metal to make this a really neat fitting for a quarter by 40, 90 degree globe valve. If you look at the way the turnings are coming off this part, you can see that it's phosphor bronze and not brass. The next part of the job is to drill down the centre tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. And for this I'm using a 7 seconds of an inch diameter twist drill. There's a slight wobble but this is not an issue because remember it's not a precision part. Now it's time to thread the part using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap. 
and I'm doing this entirely by hand. It's not a very deep thread and it's better to do it by hand because you have more feel and control doing it this way. And now for a quick test fit of the globe valve. This globe valve currently has a crushable washer fitted. That's coming off because I don't like those. This clip shows the completed modified lower water gauge fitting. No sooner had I assembled the fitting, I took it apart again. And here, as per usual, I'm dropping the painted parts into a small tub of cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner. I'm not sure if this is going to work because this paint is very well baked onto the fitting. This clip is out of sequence. Before I dropped the parts into the cellulose thinners in the tub, I re-threaded the top fitting. The original top cap must have been very shallow because there weren't too many threads down in the hole, which is just as well. It allowed me to thread much further down, and this clip shows that the top blanking plug now fits perfectly. And that's it for this episode. The water gauge is repaired and almost ready to be put back into service. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.